Hi, and welcome to part two of what to do with these uh, bead embroidery pieces that I've made. And I'm turning them both into bracelets. Uh, one is I'm going to show you how to do today, and the second one I'm going to show you how to do next week. Um, I'm taking the centerpiece here, and I'm in this case I'm going to do it the simplest method possible, which is attaching it to a peyote bracelet that you make. And then you're going to sew this on the peyote bracelet. It just gets sewn right on. And then you have this wonderful uh, embroidered piece on top of the peyote bracelet. That's the one I'm going to show you today. And uh, next week I'm going to show you one that's a little bit more designer, which is much more complicated. And I will show you how to do each of these elements as we go along. So today we're going to learn how to do this part. We've already made these uh, embroidered, bead embroidered pieces. And I'm going to show you the colorway for this, but we're going to do it in some fun colors so you can see it. And I'm just going to do a little sampler bracelet for you so you can see how to do this. So, all right. So this is uh, just straight peyote um, and it's done with delicas. So it's quite smooth and slinky. It's quite wonderful. And then I do a uh, peyote toggle to go over a button and it's just a cup button. So the colorways that I actually used in the real bracelet to sort of match up with the colorways of the other one was uh, this one here, which is um, metallic bronze, so you can see. And that's these are all 11 uh, delicas. And then I used the green iris, um, the dark green iris. And I found it was green enough that it matched uh, well enough with uh, the stone, so that was really good. And then uh, gunmetal, um, and I'm using this just on the edge and that gave it a little bit of shimmer or shine on the edge, and then matte black. And to do the whole bracelet, I used less than half a tube of the matte black, and it's the main color in the bracelet. So as you can see, I have the gunmetal on the outside, and then I have the bronze, the matte black, and then I have the green, and then the matte black, and then the bronze, and then the, the uh, gunmetal again on the outside. And it just gives a little bit of shimmer on the outside, so when you look at it with the actual pendant, it just sort of adds to the sort of shimmer of it all, makes it uh, quite nice as a bracelet. So I'm going to show you how to attach the bracelet. I've attached it on one side. I'm going to show you how to attach it on the other side today as well. Once uh, we do our sampler piece, so you know how to do the peyote bracelet and how to taper the ends a little bit um, so you don't have sharp corners that are in the way if you're going to do seed bead or, or button kind of toggle clasps on the end of it. Um, you, can dent, you can also use um, a normal toggle and bar clasp. You can use other kinds of clasps if you want. So let's get started with the peyote. I'm going to show you the method that I tend to use, although I don't tend to use a stop bead. I am going to use a stop bead today just to make it easier because those of you who are brand new or newer um, are going to have trouble. So I'm just grabbing a stop bead, something that doesn't fit in my project. And you should uh, grab a, a wingspan. Uh, you're going to have to add thread as you go for this bracelet because you have to make it the length that Basically, the bracelet's a finished bracelet, and then you add the uh, piece on the top. So I'm just going to go around this once, and uh, I like my stop bead to move. I've got a couple of, probably three inches of extra tail thread left. And then I just need to pick up in a pattern. Now, if I'm doing a stripe pattern, um, in this case, I want to do an even count. So what I did was I picked up um, the main color, which we'll call cream in this case. So I picked up two main color, I picked up two, we'll call this the bronze color. Um, so this was the gunmetal, then it was the bronze, okay, in, in my case. And then I picked up two of the main color again. And then I picked up two of the center color, because I'm trying to keep numbers even, right? Two of the main color. And then two of this color and then two of the main color again. Okay, so that gives you your striped pattern. And then the outside ones would be gunmetal in the case of the one that I actually made, okay? So I'm going to show you with this because it's easier to see for you on camera than those dark colors. Those dark colors are, I tried to film them and it's, there's no way. All right, so I tend to bring everything down and I just tend to grab the tail thread and then hold the beads on my finger. Um, and that gives it some tension, so when I'm bringing the needle back up, it makes it a little bit easier. So the first one, uh, when you do peyote, 
um, you know, you have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 on here. This is 14 wide, and that's how wide the actual bracelet was as well. Um, you're going to pick up a bead after you've got your amount on that you need. Sorry about that. I got into a bit of a coughing fit, so I paused for a second. So you're going to pick up a bead. You're going to skip a bead, and then you're going to go through the next bead. So you're going to skip that first bead. And this is the f this first row is the hardest row when you're starting peyote. And you want these two to sit beside each other, but I'm holding onto the thread right now, right? So I'm going to switch my thumb and hold onto the beads, and then I'm going to pull. And see, you get this little triangle. Now I'm going to hold onto that triangle again, and I'm going to just... I know that I've gone through this bead. You can see my thread coming out. See if this helps if it'll focus for you. Come on. Okay, so yeah, the beads in the background are the problem again. All right, let me zoom in and see if that helps. So I can remove some of this background noise. Okay. So I've got the two whoops, the two beads on my finger. I'm just going to bring it around again, and everything's pushed up fairly tight against the stop bead. Okay, so I got the two beads that are beside each other on the bottom, and I'm going to hold that my thumb at the end of it, and I'm pulling up. So I have the bead that I that I went through here. I can see my thread coming out, and when you're doing a stripe pattern, you just need to follow the bead that's you're going to jump over. So the skip a bead. So my skip a bead is pink, so I'm going to pick up a pink and then I'm going to go through my next bead. Okay? And then I'm going to pull. Now I just caught that around my finger. And that happens with the first one you just got to be very patient and I'm I'm putting my putting my fingers over top of the two beads and pulling. So now I have that. Okay? So that's what I have so far. I'm going to stick my fingers over top. Wait for the blur to clear up. And then I'm going to need a white because that's what I'm going to skip over. So I'm going to skip over a bead and I'm going to pass through the next bead. And that's the nice thing about doing it with um, stripes is that it's pretty easy to follow. Um, and that's what I have so far. Okay, so the next one is the turquoise or the bluish color one in this in this case. Sorry, skip a bead. I'm going to go through the next bead, and I'm going to pull tight. So that's what I have so far. White. Skip a bead. Go through the next bead. So this row, you go slow. And steady, and one bead at a time, and get it set up. Okay, so you have this sort of like zippery teeth thing happening, and you'll have that whether you're using these beads or another type of beads. It'll always work the same way. So I'm picking up a pink bead. I'm skipping this pink bead, and I'm going through the next bead. I'm picking up the bead that I'm skipping. Okay, and so that I get the stripe. Then I'm picking up a cream bead. Going through the next bead, I'm going to avoid. Sorry, I'm going to avoid the um, stopper bead, and I'm pulling through. And when it's even count, you should have the like the little top hat on the top where it's just one bead by itself. If you have two beads uh, there, then it means you've put one too many on the thing. So now I'm going to readjust in my hand. And I'm going to pull tight both the tail thread, push up the stopper bead nice and tight. So I'm just pulling it in nice and tight. The stopper bead so everything's nice and tight setting up this first foundational row making sure everything's nice and square and straight and I'm happy with everything flip it over so my stopper beads now at the bottom and I'm gonna back this out just a little bit because now that we've done the tough part it should be a little bit easier for you to see there we go okay so again I'm gonna skip this bead here I'm going to go through the sticky outies. So this is the lower bead. We're going to call these lower beads. And then the sticky outies. So the lower bead is the color that you're picking up. So in this case, the lower bead's white. And you're going to go through white. And I'm 
catching my side of my thing. And then again, I'm just pulling it tight, and that's what happens. And now I need a pink. Because the lower lower bead is pink, I gotta pick up a pink, and I need to pick just one up, not two. Come on. That needle that bead really wanted to be in this project. Sometimes I think beads have minds of their own. And this is the first couple rows are the hardest because there's nothing to hold on to either, so it's uh, much more difficult. So I'm just picking up the bead that's the down bead. So that's a blue one. I'm going to pick up a blue one. And I'm going to go through the next one. And I intend to move my thumb and finger up just a little closer so it doesn't wiggle around as much. If I hold it from way down here, from way down here, I it the whole thing sort of wiggles and woggles still. It's not very solid yet. It's and your tension's important, so make sure you're pulling your thread snug, fairly snug. Um, you don't have to go so tight you can't move the thing, but so pink is the next one. And then white is the next one. And then we've done. So this is row four that we just completed. So the first set of beads I picked up were the first two rows, and then the next set of beads that I put on in spaces was the the one that made that first jiggy joggy showing. That was the third row, and this is the fourth row. Okay, because when you look at a peyote pattern, you're going to see up beads and down beads, and you're only putting on the ones that go in the holes. Um, and that's the ones that you're putting on every time. So I tend to flip because I like to work upward. You don't have to flip. If it doesn't work for you, then don't do that. Work whatever way works. So now it's getting a lot easier. I've got a little something to hold on to. Not a lot, but I have a little something to hold on to. And now I can go a little faster. So it's a pink next. And you can set your beads up on your mat. Um, in little piles according to sort of the stripes if that makes it easier for you um, but I can just I can see what the down bead is which is the white one here so I'm picking that up and then I'm going to go through the sticky outie I'm just doing one at a time there's all kinds of methods out there that you can check into once you get used to the basics um, there's a fast fast zip method I don't use it myself um, some people pick up several do one, put the needle through, pick up the next bead, put the needle through, and then pull the whole thread. Um, there's lots of ways to do it. With Delicas, I find um, they like, they actually almost snap in place. I don't know if that makes any sense. You can feel them um, when they click into where they're supposed to be, and that's what makes it such a great bead um, for a starter. Now, with regular seed beads, you're going to get a little bit more unevenness because they're going to roll on each other. So it's not going to get as stiff as fast. Um, you're going to notice that when you're doing them with regular seed, with, you know, with, with round seed beads versus um, delicates. Okay. So you're going to continue doing this um, for the length of the bracelet that you need. So just keep doing your stripes. Keep doing your stripes. I'm going to do a little sample piece, and then I'm going to come back and show you how to sort of bring down an end, and then I'm going to show you how to I'll bring down the other end. Um, and then I'll show you how to put on a button and then how to put on, uh, make a peyote loop. Okay. So we're just going to, I'm just going to do a sample piece, but this is what I did. Um, and for me, I made it the right length that I needed for my bracelet, which for me was, I think six and a half because the toggle and, um, the button add another, um, almost inch on it for me. So that makes it seven and a half, which is perfect bracelet size for me. Okay, so I'm going to continue on, and I'll be right back when I get this little sampler swatch done for you. Okay, I just want to share one little quick trip with you. trick with you. Um, sometimes if our tension is not tight enough as we're going along, we'll have a bead that sort of sticks out, or it's kind of sloppy on the edge, and it's not very tight. So what you do is you take that bottom bead that you just put on, and you pull down. And when you pull down, it, it tightens everything up, and then you can pull straight up, so I'm pulling straight up with my thread, and it tightens everything up in that last row. Okay, that first row is a little sloppy, but that's because of the, it's the starter row, and I need to finish off the end. But see, then you have nice, even tension along the, as you go. So if this bead ends up 
you know, pulling these couple of beads out as you sort of go back up and you don't get it very tight and see there's a space there. You're like, oh, space. You just take that bottom bead and pull, hold on to it, and then pull straight up. And it'll tighten up your tension and help you out as you go along. Okay, so I've worked up a little bit of my sampler, enough to show you how to decrease the ends. It doesn't matter what side you're on, just pick, decide uh, you're going to get this kind of two beads stacked on each other sideways and one sticking out. Whether you're this way or whether you're this way, you're still going to have the same kind of thing happening, and whether you're, your thread's up here or your thread's down here. So just pick and, and it doesn't really matter which side, as long as you, when you're at the length you need, um, minus a couple of rows, stop, and we'll do this end. So what I tend to do is I come back, because I want to leave those two the way they are. I come back one bead, and I come up, and then I come over, it's three beads in, one, two, three. And I just come up the one bead, try not to get my thread tangled around things. I come back down the second bead, just like that. And then I come back down the second bead in here, and then up the first two. Because my thread was coming out of the bottom here, so I couldn't come straight up without thread showing. So what I did, again, is I went up here, went up here, went down here, went back through here, and then straight up here. Okay? And then you add, continue to add the rest of the row. So, pink, white, and that's what I literally do. Blue, white, pink, and I usually have my seed beads actually to the side, of, to the, my right side because I'm right handed so it works better and I tend not to knock everything around as much. Okay, so I'm to the other side, right? So I'm all the way across. Now we have to do the same thing, right? So we come down. And then we come down the third one. And then we go back up. Or up the second one here on the second row here. And just take your time, get in between the beads. Then we're going to go to the second one on the last row. And then I'm going to come back down the two. Ta -da. So I can flip, and now I'm ready to decrease my ends more. So I have to add my beads. So this is a pink one, so I have to add that one. And then my white one. So I'm following the pattern just as always. The only difference is now I don't have as many beads on the end here. So I have less rows to less beads to put in on the between the sticky outies. And I'm still following everything. And a pink bead, which is over here. I gotta move my Let's see to pick one up. So this time it's a little bit easier. You can go through the one. I like to go through two, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because if I go through the one and I do what I'm gonna do. I find it separates out like this a little bit, so I go through two of those three that are left. So I have two of the three that are left. And then I take my thread underneath the thread bridge, which is sometimes hard to do, with especially with Delicas, with seed beads, it's super easy. I just gotta find the thread bridge there. Come on, where are you? There we go, found the thread bridge. Take it under the thread bridge. And I go straight back down those three beads. And I pull. And see, you have a nice clean edge. And there's no bead sitting wonky. So I'm happy with that when I do that. 
Don't pull too tight because you will buckle the whole end if you pull too tight. So just pull enough that it's firm. So now I have to put a white bead in because that's my space. And I'm going into the next sticky outie. And the next sticky outie. Okay, so if you look at this end here, you can see it's one, two, three, four, five. This is one, two, three. If I add that, it'll be four, right? And you're because we're we're even count, you're not going to have a dead center. We sort of these three beads become your center, sort of. Um, it's the best you can do. So just make it look as even as possible. So again, I'm going to go up to two with my last pink one. I'm going to find the thread bridge. This takes a little bit of digging sometimes with your needle. Especially if you've stitched pretty tightly. So I found the thread bridge between the two. And I'm going to come back up. Those three. So, this is where I stopped on mine. I was quite happy with that. Um, you can go further if you want. But... It's up to you. You can go right to a point if you want. So now I need to work my way back over to the center to put uh, my button on. So I'm going to just come across here. So I'm just coming, I'm following the pattern my, of my thread. And I tend to leave the very outer beads alone because I'm going to have to pass through that a few times. Um, because that's where I'm going to be adding my button and I'm going to reinforce my button. So I'm just, I'm coming through two that time. I'm just avoiding the very outer beads in that sort of middle section here. Doesn't really matter. I just got to get to the other side. And what I want to do is I want to be able to get my needle to come out one this side or to come out this one. And I'm going to use those two highest sticky outies. They look like the highest ones. They're not. But these two here is where, I, between these two is where I'm going to put everything. Okay, so that's what I'm doing is working my needle around, come back down that one, and then I come up here. Okay, so I'm going to grab my button and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my, this is a Potomac bead cup button. Um, I got a sampler pack, so I got all kinds of colors that I don't normally use. So this works perfect for this. It's, as you can see, how much brighter white it is than the cream. But this works perfect for this. It doesn't matter. So I need to figure out what I want to do with this um, so that it lays nice. And one of the things I've learned about buttons, and I'm going to show you this one. This is the one I've done already. Is I learned that if you make a little X and you have sort of this center spot, when you put on your toggle, it, uh, the toggle loop to go over top of it, it tends to lay better, it tends to lay flatter. See how that sort of bends better? And when you have something else in there, it'll lay better. If you just go straight up and down um, without sort of the cinching waist, it tends to um, sort of lay like this more. And then what happens is that it, you're banging this sort of edge of the button all the time on the desk because that's underneath your wrist, right? So that's just what I've noticed. So I need to pick up, make a pattern of some sort. So I just need a few more white ones out here. All right, so I'm just going to pick up two white. And I'm going to pick up a green, and that's going to be my transition. And then I'm going to pick up two more white. All right, and then I'm going to come through my button, the one side of my button. So this is what I have so far. Okay. And now I need to put something colorful on the top. So in this case, I'm going to use a green, pink, green. Doesn't really matter which ones you use. You can use a crystal at this toy if you're using crystals in your pattern. It takes three size 11 beads um, to cover the top. You can use 15 O's. Um, so this is what the top of my button looks like. It's kind of fun. It's kind of cute. Just adds a little sparkling of color to make it match in with my bracelet. All right. So now I'm coming out of the button. I need two more whites. And now I'm going to go through the green. 
because that's going to be my X point. And often, um, if I'm using different size beads, I will make this, the green X point, a bigger bead. So if I was using 8-0s too, um, in the pattern that I was doing, I would make that an 8 -O. I definitely wouldn't make it a smaller bead. And then I need two more. And now I'm going to go through this other sticky uppy. Remember I told you I was going to go through the two sticky uppies in the center, sort of center there? And that's where I'm going to make my little, so then I have this little sort of X that's created. All right? When I pull it tight. And it looks pretty centered on the on the whole project if you look at it. If I lay it down like this, it's gonna it looks pretty centered. And that seems to work the best, and that's what I did on, on the other one. So then I just take and remember I told you not to cloud those clog those up too badly. I'm just coming back down one. Did I catch a second one by accident? Yes I did. I don't want to do that, so I'm gonna come back up. Yep, yeah, I caught the uh turquoise one here and I didn't want to catch it. It was coming back up it. I'm catching the turquoise one, the one I didn't touch near the edge. I've got lots of room in that one. I'm going to take the second turquoise one here. And then I'm going to come back out the turquoise one the same direction I went in before. And I'm going to go through my button, all my beads again. So up through the two, don't miss any. Rip. Dropping everything here. Okay. Seed bead camera work is quite hard. Just so you know. And I'm learning as I go. So up through the two. Up through the middle one. Now, I always make a little note to myself as I just came down this leg or up this leg near the blue one, so I need to make sure when I come back through this X, I go down this other side. Just a, a mental note to self. So I don't end up reinforcing one side a ton and not the other side. So come up, and I try to catch the bead, uh, at least the first bead in the button, because otherwise you got to try to scoop it out of the button, and that's always hard to get a hold of. So I tighten it down. Come through the middle one in the button. And I gotta say, the ladies at Potomac Beads make this look so easy. And it's not as easy as it looks. But you get it gets easier. Just gotta take your time. So I don't want to go through that one. I just want to go through the two. Through the X again. Remember, I made a mental note to self. I need to take this through... Okay, through the middle one. And then I gotta take it down the leg that's towards the white. And I'm just gonna catch that white one as I go. Ta-da! So it's tight again. So that's the second pass. Um, you could definitely work your way through and do a third pass if you'd like. Um, I like to do three passes um, every time. And I just usually work my way a slightly different way every time I do it. So. Um, just to sort of not make the beads really like crazy with thread. So I don't know if you're noticing, but I'm going a slightly different way. I'm coming back up this one. So I'm just doing a, a turn in this little white and then back down. And now I'm ready to go up the be the buttons on the other side this time first. Doesn't really matter. The button does not care. It's whatever works for you. I'm holding on to my button, coming up, trying to keep my tail out of the way. My tail is usually not that close, so come up through the middle, then come up through the two, come up through the button, come up through the first one on the button. Can I? Yes, I got it all in one pass. Yay! Miracles never cease. Hold on to my button, put it through. Why is it blurry? Thank you. There we go back down, back down, well it went down through one, that's okay, pull, back down through that middle bead again, ooh, it's going down even farther, but I don't want it to go down that, I want to go down the blue side this time, so that was a nice 
gesture on it, on my beads part, but wrong way. So I'm, I'm moving things around and pushing up beads and stuff, trying to get, there we go, got it through the center. Move the tail thread out of the way. Now I want to come back down the blue side. That mental note to self helps me. And I'm just coming through a bunch of beads, following the thread path. And so I have three reinforcements in here, and I'm quite happy with that. Um, it's pretty stiff, it's pretty good. So now I just need to finish off my thread. So what I tend to do is I work my thread through, um, through my work. I occasionally tie knots, but not in the center. If I tie knots, it would be on an outer edge, but it's very rare that I do that with a peyote. Um, so I'm working in, I came down and now I'm coming back up. So I'm going to go up a couple and then I'm going to come back down inside of where I went down the first time and then another one. So my thread just went through the bead, this bead here, this bottom one, that way. So now it's coming back through this way and I'm cro what I'm doing is crossing my thread path. And I'm just pulling every time and making sure I can't see the thread that is popping down between the beads. And I'll show you again. So if I come down here, I'll do it in the blue so you can see it a bit better. I'm coming down. It's like a little figure eight. I'm coming over one. It's from my, you can see where my thread's coming out. I'm coming over one. I'm coming back up one beside that one. So my thread had originally come through that bead right there in between beside my needle on the left side and then I'm coming back up to where my thread came out came down to do that little so that that means my thread is crossed over itself. Uh, once I've done that twice I'm good to cut off my thread at any point and that is not going anywhere it's not coming out it doesn't show um, and I don't cut off at the out, outside edge. I always like to cut off on the inside somewhere and just cut it as tight as you can. And I usually tend to do that with tension. I have a pair of nippers. I need to get a new pair. These are getting rather dull. But I pull with tension on my thread and cut. Now, um, lots of people like to um, use a zapper and use, um, and as you can see, there's no thread. I look on the plane, there's no thread to cut. Um, for me, it works great on edges or in between bigger beads, but for a peyote, when you're cutting it off in the middle, sometimes you end up with a little blobby that sometimes can discolor. Even with a white thread, it'll discolor as you burn it down, and you can see the little blobby, and then I can't get rid of it, and it makes me crazy because that's just who I am. So that's the one side. So I'm going to take the stop bead off, tie this thread in, start another longer thread, and I'm going to taper this end and then I'm going to show you how to do your peyote loop. Okay, so I brought my needle out of, I've shaped this edge the same as the other edge and I brought my needle out of that first white bead, remember between the white and the blue is where we're putting everything. So I'm going to do the two white and the blue and now this time um, I know I'm going to use some 15 O's and the only really good 15 O's that I had that sort of match are a bag that I got um, from Eureka Crystal Beads and these ones are opaque white um, so I'm going to use those on the very outer edge so my first round of my loop I don't want it to be white because um, I like to incorporate all the colors if I can because um, I'm going to do three rounds so I'm going to do my first loop uh, pink so I need to put on my needle um, 30 delicas and I'm going to do that off screen and I'll come back when I have 30 on my needle and on my thread and we'll continue from there. Okay, so I got 30 on my needle. I put them in groups of 10. I've recounted them to make sure everything's there. And now I'm going to come back down the green. You guessed it. And I'm going to pull. I'm just holding it in my hand and I'm pulling them a little tighter so they're not so far away from the rest of the beadwork. I'm going to put two more white and I'm going to come into the blue one like so with the two white. So 
So I have the same little stubbies at the and the little branch and then so that they match on both ends and I have my 30 around here. So now I need to turn around and come back up and it doesn't matter what side you come back up or how you turn around but I'm, I'm basically wanting to take my follow my thread path and don't catch it around the little loop. Now this is a good point before I go any further just to double check and this could be fun just to double check that the button's going to fit. Now this as you see is a little loose and the reason being is because when I peyote it's going to tighten it a bit so that's why I use 30 beads um, so let me show you on the finished one so on the finished one I'll get the threads out of the way there we go okay so there's my button and there's my peyote toggle when I'm done this um, pushes beads in and makes it a little bit smaller and this is see it just fits nicely around there and then goes like this so there's my peyote loop now if you wanted you could carry this bracelet further and put your button attach your button to two beads sort of in the center here on the green stripe farther in with the same method and then you would, your loop would go over like this and your two ends would come closer together so it's up to you um, that's another like really nice way to finish it because you don't have the big space of the toggle um, it's up to you how you want to do it and what works best for your jewelry design okay so we're gonna go back to the one we're doing with a nice bright colored bead so you can see everything I'm just working my way back over to either one of these it doesn't really matter which one I do going one bead at a time I try not to catch that loop which this thread is wanting to do every single time so I'm gonna come back down back through those two and then I can come back out my blue and then I'm ready to go back up my loop so because I'm gonna be doing three sets of uh, peyote around two sets of peyote around this um, I'm gonna it's gonna reinforce my other threads as I go so I'm just coming up those three beads and getting ready to start now peyote is, is just like as if you had the starter set um, you're gonna skip a bead go through a bead so I'm gonna use the blue for this round so I'm gonna skip this first bead here I'm gonna cover my beads so that it's not showing so much skip this bead and I'm gonna pass through this bead and I tend to push out my beads a little bit because it gives me space to sneak my needle in a little easier so I can sneak my needle in a little easier so that gives me my first skip a bead pass through the next bead so my second one skip a bead pass through the next bead so that's what, what's happening and then see how I just sort of stick my thumb in there and push and it gives me just a smidge of space just not to sneak, sneak my needle in skip a bead pass through the next bead Oops. except for when I do that and try to go through four or five beads at once skip a bead pass through the next bead and you know I'm picking up a bead every time right I have the blue Get the bead, pass through the next bead, and I'm going to do this all the way around till I get to the bottom. So I get down here, I'm going to come back down this side, I'm going to bring my needle back up, and then I'm going to start getting ready. I'm going to bring my thread out right of this out of the blue here to get ready to do what we have need to do next. So I'm going to continue around doing this peyote again. I'm going to come through this center bead, down through these ones which I haven't reinforced yet gonna circle around come back up so that'll be my third thread going through this set through the center bead here and I'll come back out coming out of that center bead here when I'm done and I just realized something as I was going around um, I have to put a bead in here so I'm gonna put a, a bead in here before I go down just so like there's two here there's gonna be two here as well before I go down and around okay so I'm coming up the center bead and uh, this is where you have to make a choice 
Um, I am going to be putting the little 50 nose here, um, but there really isn't space here. So I'm going to just step up on this first blue bead and start putting the white beads after. So I need my 50 nose. Now you could do another round of the bigger beads in the white, um, but it's going to look pretty spiky. And if that's the way you want it to look, that's great. So I'm just going to grab a couple of pinches of my little 50 nose. And Okay, so this is where you need to figure out, um, at this point, how many will fit in there nicely. So, if I put one in there, try not to catch it around everything, it fits pretty good, but it's, if I put one in every one, it's going to cup this whole thing, because I can see that there's a little more space than one in here, and then when I come around the, up in here, I can definitely get two. So you need to figure out your spacing on this. Um, I tend to do one and then two, one and then two. Um, and I try it out and see how it goes. Or sometimes I'll do one on the first couple of bottom ones and then I'll do one and then two and then one and then two. So I'm picking up one, going to the next sticky outy, picking up two, going through the next sticky outy, picking up one, I can see how it's laying pretty flat. It's filling it in. It's giving me the white to go with everything. Um, and it makes it more of a smoother edge rather than a, a sort of a real jagged edge. So it's up to you what you want to do, um, what works for you. Sometimes in the bend here, I end up giving it two between each, but we'll see. I'm going to just stick with the one, two, one, two. Try not to do what I just did, put it through two. This one, and of course my 15s are bouncing all over my mat, which is fun. Two. So it's laying pretty flat. I'm not having any major problems yet. I should be okay. I want this to lay flat. I don't want it to cup up or curl up. Um, so that's why you have to switch sides, uh, switch sizes. 11-0 um, doesn't quite uh, make it size-wise, um, if you just put one in each one and two's too much. So that's why I switched down to 15s. You can do whatever you like. Uh, this is a great place to put, uh, if you do another row, you can put crystals if you want. Um, you know, whatever works for you. Again, this is just some basics how to do this stuff and then you can play with your color combinations to your heart's content. Two. And there's my last one there. Now I need to see if when I pull it, is it, whoops, is it laying flat? Is it cupping? It's pretty good. I'm not having any major problems and they're good and tight in there. I can get one more in here and I think I'm going to put it in there because I think it'll close that gap really nicely. And there's a funky one. I don't want that funky one. There we go. Okay, so I got one more and then I'm going to come back down through that center because that's where this whole process does its thing. See? So now I have my peyote loop. I would go back through my work and tie off my thread. So I have the both. I was actually kind of thinking this is kind of funny, but I have this little tiny sampler piece. And I thought if I do this, I know this sounds really funny. If it was this sampler piece was just a little bit bigger, it would be a fun little funky ring. Um, Obviously, the sampler piece would have to be bigger, but I'd have a little button ring. But it's too small for even my baby finger, tip of my baby finger. But yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, yeah, I'm just playing with it. I love playing with peyote and paint, playing with peyote shapes. So I love the, this color combination. It's kind of fun and funky. Okay, so that's how you do your narrowing, how you do your peyote strip that you're going to need, how you do your toggle and your button. And that's what's going to give you this piece here. So um, get that done and then come back and I'll show you how to sew on the um, piece. So in this one, I sorry, I used uh, the antique, uh, sorry, the bronze, um, as you can see, one, two, one, two. And I did had to do two on some of these. Um, 
when I did this particular loop. I'll be back and show you how to sew it on. Okay, so you've created this peyote bracelet because I showed you how to do that in the other steps. You've curved the ends, you've added your clasp, uh, whatever clasp you want. If you don't want to use uh, a hand done, um, you know, button and peyote toggle, you could just make a small loop here and add, um, you know, a small loop on the end and do like a a regular magnetic clasp, whatever you'd like. So just have to modify it by just making a little round loop here with um, just a round loop here with like five, uh, four C beads um, with the two center ones and just go around and reforce several times and then finish it there and there and then you can add another style of clasp. You could use a metal toggle, that kind of thing. Um, you could also, with because uh, you're using Mayuki's, you could use a slide clasp that slides over, um, not slides over, the, the three hold ones where you bead through them. So you could use other types of clasps if you want. Um, it's up to you. So I've done the one side on here. Um, so it makes it easier for me to sort of keep it from sliding all over. But basically what you want to do is figure out sort of where your center is on this. Um, how you want this to sit on your wrist. I decided to do this one sideways. The other one I'm doing up and down. Um, so this one's lengthways. So it's a little longer than it is wider. So, And this happened to work perfectly with the green stripe. My green stripe's my middle. And this side doesn't work as well. So when I see how much is hanging over either side, it looks like I have to go put it sort of between these two um, fire polish beads here on this green to make it sort of equal on either side so that you end up having a bracelet that sort of looks like this which is like going to be amazing cuff bracelet so this is just the the one version and then you'll see the other version so and that's because I can't make my mind up so I did two versions so yeah, I have some fire line um, what was left over from what I was working on um, when I put the other side on you can uh, put this on a couple of ways. You could have done two sections and then put them on here. Because of the rounded edge, I, when I had the one section made, I checked to see if there was a good place to attach. And other than literally sewing the peyote across the uh, altar suede here and sort of attaching it that way, uh, because of the loopiness of the how, how steep of a curve this is, there was no nice way to make the peyote match it lovely. I could have done a smaller strip and then attached it for sure but with a wide strip like this it was much more difficult to get it to look more professional. I didn't want it to look cheapy since, since this is African Jade and I spent a lot of hours of work on this. So how do I make it look professional? And that was you know part of the process, right? And I kind of liked this sort of sleek uh, even though it's bead embroidery piece that it ended up being looking like. So I tried several different um, possible bracelets and you're going to see two different ones. One today and then one in another video. So what I need to do is I need to sew this edge down. Um, the other thing I could do is sew this edge in like taking little tack stitches going through the little um, thread on the edge um, but again I, it, there wasn't enough maneuvering room in here for me to feel comfortable. So I decided to tack the edge. There's lots of different ways to tack. So I need to start my thread. So I need to know approximately where my thread's got to start, um, where I need to have my thread come out. And I know that sounds funny, but the best way to do that is just to, I go up one bead because I don't want my thread to be cut off at the end. And then I know I need to be, the bead below where my thread's coming out is where I need to start attaching this section because I'm going to attach it all the way across from one side to the other. So I can move this out of the way now and I can just get my, I'm just holding this here. Now I know this is going to be much harder to see and let's, we'll zoom in now and see if we can get it so that you can see it. I know it's shiny and the thread's not going to show as well and I'm sorry about that but this is the same way I showed you how you finish off a thread where you, you take it where it's coming out and then I'm going to go up a bead. I'm holding on to the tail below my thumb. I'm going back down a bead beside it. Oh, there's my tail. Nope. Yep. Nope. That was my... Back down the bead and then back down the bead that my tail thread is coming out of. 
And it's being a little bit nuts because it wants to go to the outside edge. That's fine. Okay. So I'm just getting this locked in. I'm doing two figure eights. And now I do want to take it to the outside edge. So I'm taking it back down here. So there's my tail thread that I was holding on to. And my tail thread, you can see, is coming out of I know, shiny beads. Sorry, guys. This bead here. Yep. This bead here. So I needed to be coming out of this bead here. This is the time that and I, if I pull right now, my it's not moving my tail thread whatsoever. So I know that it's good and secure. So I can cut off this extra under some tension, which I didn't set up properly. So just give me a second. There we go. So now I can flip this back over. So now you need to take your piece and you need to hold it so it's where you want it to be. So my thread's coming out down here on the edge and I can see that the closest button, the closest bead without showing any thread would be this one here. And this is where you have to use a little bit, there's not a formula for this. Um, you have to use a little bit of your own sort of intuition and skills of hiding thread and if you've gotten any good at it over the years or over the time that you've been doing it. The idea is you don't want to see the thread, but you want to sew it down. So I'm going to try to come through just the one bead, which is great. I've come through just the one bead. Make sure I didn't catch it on anything because I can't see very well. Yeah. So now I've got it sort of tacked on the edge there. So what can I see what's close? So I can see that there's a see that bead below on my if I hold this here, you can just see the edge of it where my needle's going in. Just below this bead here. So I can go in here if I want and just sew through the one bead on the bottom. It's kind of like basting something on something, but I'm just using the beads as my material. Now my thread's here. What's close? Well, this fire polish is close. So I can put it through the fire polish to attack the top now. Right? So now I have the two on, and now I need to bring it into another one. So I'm looking below the fire polish, and I can see this black one right here. It's hard to see. Coming out of the fire polish, I can see my I'm double checking to make sure I'm holding it where I'm supposed to now. Let's see what I see where, from where I'm coming out of. Actually, it's not the fire polish. It's, uh, it's this brass one here. I'm just going to go through the one, I think. Yep. And I'm going to pull. So, so far you can't see any thread and that's the whole idea. And basically I'm going to continue to do this if I need to, uh, one of the things I can do. So if I'm worried that that's not been tacked down enough here at this point, I can actually come backwards through a bead. So I could come through this bead here. I can get my needle to go in there. Come on, get in there. And I've been around these beads on the outside several times, so these are pretty tight. There we go. And I'm using a size 12 needle at this point. Okay. So I come back through that bead from where I am. And then I could come back down again and snag that other bead at the bottom one more time. So I can sort of play ring around the rosy, I like to call it. And as you can see, you still can't see the thread which is awesome. And I'm going to continue to do this and I just work my way across. So now I'm at the bottom. I need to find a bead at the top. What's closest. So I can actually take my thread and go, oh, that one would work. So I can take this middle bead here and come through it. And if I can do every bead I do, if I can't do every bead, I do uh, every second bead. The, obviously the fire polish are bigger. And again, I'm really making sure that I try to keep this this here as centered as I can in my hand. So that's where my pressure is and I just tilt this back and forth um, to try to get it through as I'm sewing. So I'm holding it and you could actually you know use a clamp or something if you wanted to make sure that it didn't move. Um, eh, it, you can hold it. It's not too bad. And it allows you to make sure that the backing is also nice and nice and smooth across the back. You can feel that it's smooth. You can't even see like I stitched down this one end here and you don't see a big dimple where I stitched it down on the back. 
so you have this nice smooth back at the same time so I'll just do a couple more stitches so you can see again what I'm doing so I, I've got my thread coming out here do I see a delica that sort of lines up with it or is really close to it yes this black one right here I know this is hard to see but see how that black one's right there so I'm going to grab that one black one and I just want to grab the one bead sometimes you have to sort of move that back a bit to get it out of the way so that was the bead that I wanted and I go through that bead now what's the next bead that I need so I'm here oh fire polish time so I'm going to go through the fire polish just the fire polish okay and now I need to figure out what's next so it looks like this green bead here would be a good one hide in and I literally did that I went back and forth from bead to bead to bead to bead and stitched all the way along and I'm, it's just like sewing something on back and as you can see everything's sewn on it's a beautiful bracelet and let me just try it on so you can see what it looks like so I'm putting I'm putting it on my wrist here and coordination 151 I did not pass so I'm just putting the top the loop the peyote loop around the button so there it is it's around the button and it, as you can see it lays really flat it's not sticking up a ton it's, I'm not gonna be banging it, catching it on the edge of it a lot on things which is great if you, especially if you work in any kind of office situation where you've got you know tons of stuff going on but this is what it looks like it's, it's beautifully on my wrist it's very comfortable to wear I'm quite happy with it um, this is how it turned out so uh, this is the first one we'll be showing you the second one in another video next week and how to do um, the other pieces, the other elements, you're going to need to do the second one with a with a, a different style using the same kind of um, bead embroidered piece in the center and you know create your own bead embroidered piece, create your own colors on your band, have fun, use whatever beads you want and uh, your own colorways and just really enjoy it so this is what it looks like and you've got the flashes of green and, and it looks really quite smart it's actually almost like a watch band it's uh, quite neat anyways keep on making for Manny's makings and uh, have fun bye